here's the thing. I'm sure you've noticed this that every time you come for an event, there's a standing ovation like this. It's um, you are referred to very often as a as a legend. How does that feel? That's a priceless feeling in itself, isn't it? Well, it feels very old to start off <clears throat> because uh, to be called a legend, first of all, I don't believe I'm a legend. Uh, but to be called a legend, which means you have spent a lot of time on the field, on the field, whether depending on whichever stream you come from, whether you are from Bollywood, whether you are from cricket or any other sport or business, banking, any sector. There's a survey where the results revealed that you are the second most admired man in India. Talia, <laughs> Ujay. That is a big deal. Second, second to whom? Second to our Prime Minister. Well, I think uh, I can stand in the election now. I think if I ever want to get into politics, I'll have to really study a lot, you know, do a lot of changes, and you know, then maybe I'll be able to adapt. Uh, but you know, it's it's a big thing to be admired by so many people, and. You know, thanks to cricket, if I was not playing cricket, don't, I don't think, you know, there'll be so many people who'd be admiring me. And a lot of times uh, people say, oh, you are very lucky. You know, I love when people say that. And I just tell them, you know, it's not like I am lucky, it's just that the number of people I meet and the connect that I have with the people, they are the ones who pray for me. You know, and that's why I'm so lucky. It's not like, you know, I, I was born lucky, but over the years it has happened that, you know, Whenever there's a 50-50 scenario, more often than not, you know, it turns in in the favor of us, you know, whether it's me as an individual or as a team. So, you know, being lucky is important, but at the same time, I think uh, the admiration and uh, it's something, you know, uh, you know, you, you feel a lot more satisfied looking at, you know, the kind of ovation you get wherever you go and the kind of love and affection that people show towards you. We talk about luck in just a minute, but I'm going to make a prediction here. It's, it is going to happen. I see it. MS Dhoni, Prime Minister of the country, couple of years from now, that is a possibility. I really believe. I really believe. And then when this happens, you said Mandira Bedi predicted it, okay? Sitting on stage talking to Dhoni. But I think that's more pressure than, you know, uh, really, trying to win a World Cup. You don't take pressure. Imagine, imagine, especially with the banking sector and everyone, oh, the GDP is going down, you know, the financial deficit is happening, <laughs> export, import, all that thing. We are a big country. The number of people that in itself is a big challenge. You know, we talk about, uh, you know, local trains or buses or roads. We are just too big and it will take time, you know, for us to uh, become what some of the other countries are. But I always felt till your intention is right and you're moving forward thinking that this is what is good for the country or the state, you know, it, that is the right decision. Uh, we've seen a World Cup win, we've seen a T20 World Cup win, we've seen India uh, at number one, ranked at number one for 18 months in the test format. So you've given our country many, many, many priceless moments. A big round of applause for that. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen. But what would you say is your priceless moment as far as your, the cricketing career is concerned? A, as captain and B, as player. Well, the answer would be very different. You know, a lot of people would be expecting, okay, this is something that he would pick, that is something that he would pick. But uh, the two special moments, uh, first I would say it was just after the 2007 T20 World Cup, we landed in Mumbai. So for a lot of us, we were part of the team that went to England. And from England, we got selected and we went to South Africa for the T20 World Cup. So we won, we were coming back and that day it was very cloudy and you know, it was raining. So it, we started our descent, we were about to land and I look outside, I'm like, you know what, it's raining, there would be nobody to receive us. We shall book all our flights and we'll go back to our respective cities because we have been out for so long. So we land and even before immigration, there were like loads of people to receive us. And I still remember, we were in a double-decker bus. It was I an open-top no bus. No one can forget that experience. Raining, cloudy. Yes, and it took us literally five hours from the airport to the Wankhede Stadium. We all got wet. We were in the bus. We dried up somehow. 
we again got wet because in between again it was raining so it happened like twice or thrice and then the most memorable moment came so what is called the queen's necklace we are right in the center there are people all around there are cars parked all around there are people on the street you look ahead there are thousands of people you look behind there's thousands of people and everybody had a smile on their face none of them were sitting in the car all of them were outside they were having their cameras they had that smile they were clicking pictures i don't know how many of them actually missed their flights or were very late for work it was not late it would have been very late for work but that's that's what it meant to them you know we were thinking okay we'll go back home and then we kind of response we got and also we don't really have anything to compare it to because 2011 we won but there was no celebration like that like this because we never went out nothing really happened even the time when we won we were in the stadium till 1 130 and we actually like i personally actually didn't see the people celebrate on the street whatever we saw was on television so you know that was a very memorable moment the second would be it was during the 2011 world cup it was during the finals we were uh sitting in uh, not sitting we were playing at wankhede and it was like 10 or 15 runs were needed and me and yuvraj we were batting and all of a sudden the crowd they start singing the song vande mataram oh my and, god that gives me goose flesh and you're it. right in the middle and imagine 35 40000 people you know saying vande mataram and so it used to start from let's say if it started from north stand your ears actually move because it goes around so that would be my second most memorable moment or one or two you know i can't really stack it saying this was the preferred moment but it was something that was very very special and i don't know if i would ever be able to witness something like that because you may have 40000 people uh singing the national anthem or singing the national song but that atmosphere the the moment uh the hard work that was put for that 45 50 days you know during the world cup whether it will come or not you know so uh, i feel these are the two priceless moment uh, when it comes to my cricketing career and there have been lots of other moments but uh, these two i think were very very priceless you know to me what advice would you give a youngster today who's getting into um into cricket or sport any kind of competitive sport maybe the youngsters today the only piece of advice uh, i would give them which was very relevant when i made my debut or people in the 80s played cricket is the core you take care of cricket everything else will It's take care. care of itself so this is you your social media i follow you on instagram is has got a lot lots of videos and lots of images of your beautiful little daughter tell us or share with us a, one of the most priceless moments that you you've had with her uh, i think the most priceless moment was after the world cup when we came back uh, and sakshi and ziva they were still in delhi at that point of time gurgaon and the first time i saw her i picked her up and she must be two months or one and a half months and she made a lot of noise that was the first time she was seeing me i don't know whether she saw me or not because they see as a as a kid who's one month two month they don't they can't really the, see yeah, long yeah their vision is not developed but for the full five minutes she was making noise she was giggling and she was like she has never done it i don't know why she is doing she even had problem with that why is she doing it <laughs> why is she never first you were not there now yes. she's come why is she responding to you like this yeah so <laughs> I think that was a priceless moment because whatever said and done that first time when you see your newborn you know something happens which is very difficult to describe in word and from that till now she is four and a half and every every time she comes in and she has a a new question or answer and the latest is uh, you know when when you ask me okay why do you love papa ah oh, papa is money Oh, wow. I don't know who taught her, but <laughs> she stayed for. She like, why do you love Papa? Oh, because Papa is money. <laughs> that priceless moment that gave you your first grey hair. Do you remember it? <laughs> I think it started very early in our career. You know, because every game that you play when it comes to cricket, it may be your last game. 
you know so like my fifth game was almost my last game people say different things about it but i had not scored in the first four games the fifth game after the game there was a selection meeting that was held so there's 99% chances coming from bihar jharkhand which was not very well known uh, for cricket if i had not scored in that game i think 90% i would have been kicked out of the team which people say no no that's where your first gray hair came i think so. probably I think it's a good thing to have or get grey hair because it shows that you think about certain things in life. You do get stressed about things in life, but the amount of grey hair and beard that I have got, uh, I think if I don't colour my hair, I'll be like Amitabh Bachchan. That's how grey I am, you know. So really, yes, at thirty nine. See, that's one secret that he's just shared with us. No, See, this I have shared with a lot of people. You have big round of applause. and as tony always straight from the heart